Hey everyone, Kirk Warner here back for part three of our three-part series on plantar fasciitis. Today we're talking about stability and strength exercises to fix your plantar fasciitis. This is different from the mobility that we did last week and in week one we talked about kind of assessment of where you need to turn your most attention. So be sure to check out previous posts um, on this subject if you didn't see them. Let's dig into some stability. So it's important to know that stability is a system and when the system breaks down our plantar fascia and the tissue in the bottom of our foot can suffer. Our hip, our knee, our ankle and our foot are all dependent on one another. So first we're going to show you how to activate the muscles around those joints to get them back online and then we're going to show you how to integrate that into a more functional pattern that can help you get back running without so much foot pain. So this is how we're going to get the hip more stable. This is really the rotator cuff muscles around the hip. These are not big muscles, they're relatively small, and we're just gonna get them to turn back on so that you have better control over your hip joint, your knee position, and your ankle and foot position. It's a very simple progression. I'm gonna talk Kirk through this. First thing I'm gonna do is cue him to be on his side. His hip's about 45 degree angle from his, from his body, and his knee's about 90 degree angle from his body. He's gonna make sure he stays on his side the whole time. You're going to start with your heels together and your top knee is going to come up high as you can raise it without rolling off of your side. And if anything, you want to be rolled forward just slightly. He's going to do five of these and after the fifth one, he's going to switch from external rotation to internal rotation. Now his knees are together and his foot's raising up and down. I'm looking for him to move through a pretty full range of movement and I'm looking to see how shaky he is as he's going through this first round. After five of those, he's going to go back to the first movement, but this time without his feet touching. So now his top leg is floating up in the air. He's still staying really stable around his spine. He's going to do five reps of external rotation this way. Then he's going to go back to internal rotation. Knees are apart. Top foot's going to go up. This is the same as the second movement, just with no contact. He might already be starting to feel a little bit of a burn around the back edge of his hip in these rotator cuff muscles, these very small muscles in his hip. After five of those, he's going to bring his hip back so his thigh is in line with his body, kind of like at the end of your running stride. The lower leg is going to go down so his foot touches the floor and then it's going to go back up into internal rotation through as big a range of motion as he can. I like to think of the thigh here as a rotisserie chicken. It stays still and it just spins on an axis. Five reps of this. And then he's going to start over, and that's one round. So let's go back to heels together. He's going to work up to the point where he can do five total rounds. That's when you know that your hip rotator cuff is back online. You may start with two or three rounds, and you may start to feel like this is just too fatigued. It's burning. You're getting a lot of shaking. The movement isn't smooth. You're not moving through a full range of motion anymore. And that's where you start. If you can do two rounds, great. If you can do three rounds, great. But over the course of time, you want to work up to the point where you have the endurance in these small hip muscles to do five total rounds. So the ankle has its own set of control muscles, stability muscles. This is like a stirrup of muscles that surrounds your ankle that keeps it stable, prevents you from spraining your ankle, but also prevents your foot from moving poorly and tearing up your plantar fascia. So Kirk and I are going to show you how to get these muscles back online, especially if you're one of these people who's had a lot of ankle sprains or have very loose ankles. This is going to be a very important part of your process of getting over your heel pain. So Kirk, why don't you loop that um, around your shoed foot, your shod foot. This, this feels much more comfortable with shoes on than it does with bare feet, and the band will actually stick onto your foot better. Um, you can use really any band, it just has to be tense enough or you have to be far away enough that you feel challenged um, during the exercise. First thing we're going to do is dorsiflexion, which is pulling up and then relaxing down. Pulling up as far as Kurt can and relaxing down. Now I want him to really try hard to not extend his toes, and you won't see this because he's in his shoes, but I want him to use his shin muscle here on the front of his shin rather than his toe extensor muscles if he can. He's moving through as big a range of motion as he can, and he's moving slowly so he gets this nice burn in his shin. I like to say that you want enough tension that after about 10 plus or minus repetitions, you're starting to feel tired in your shin. 
Once you burn that muscle out, you're gonna turn yourself so that the band pulls at a perpendicular angle to your foot, 90 degrees. So now the band's pulling his foot inward, the direction he'd be if he was spraining his ankle. And we're gonna work on the muscles in the outer lower leg that get injured when we have an ankle sprain. So he's using this leg to block his, other, his um, lower leg, and he's really isolating the movement now to just his ankle. The temp temptation for a lot of people is to let the lower leg rotate in and out. This needs to be still, and he's just pivoting, hinging at his ankle. Same rule, you want enough tension that after about 10 reps, you feel this burn on the outside of your lower leg. If it's a little jerky, your goal is to try to smooth it out so it's not this ratchety movement. Now we're gonna flip around the other way. Now the band's pulling perpendicular in the opposite direction. He's gonna use this other leg on the outside of his leg now to stabilize his lower leg. And now he's pulling inward as far as he can. This is working his inner shin. These are the muscles that support the arch from the inside and the plantar fascia. And he's just isolating this to his, his ankle again. His lower leg stays very still. And you can see him struggling, crazy. Strong as Kirk is as a runner, this is very difficult for him. He's gonna burn this out, enough tension that after 10 reps, he's feeling really tired. That's one set. I want him to repeat that at least once. And remember, we're looking for activation more so than strength. So typically two sets is enough. If you want extra credit, go ahead and do a third set. And you're gonna find that when you stand up, not only do you feel very tired in your lower leg, but everything feels more stable, a little bit stiff, and you'll feel very confident in your leg. So you probably guessed that the foot and the arch has its own set of control or stability muscles that are responsible for supporting the plantar fascia. The foot is at the bottom of the chain, however, so we know that the hip and the ankle muscles are also responsible for setting the foot up for success. If Kirk stands in a faulty position, you're gonna see that he leans to the right because his hip muscles aren't working well. His opposite side hip pelvis is dropping. His knee's caving in because his hip rotator cuff muscles aren't able to pull his knee out. And his foot's pronating in because they're at the mercy of gravity and they can't do their job either. But we're gonna talk specifically about the foot and we're gonna assume that Kirk has mastered control of his hip a little bit at this point. Now, we talked in the mobility section about maintaining a neutral foot while we were stretching. This is the stability version of Kirk bringing up his arch, but still keeping his big toe on the ground. That's gonna be his goal for standing on one foot and balancing. Once he gets in that position, he's gonna feel like he's using the muscles in the bottom of his foot, but also using the muscles in the lower leg that we just worked on using the band. Now that they're activated, they can help to support the muscles in the arch of the foot to keep that plantar fascia, pla plantar fascia off tension. We'll put this all together in a minute, but for now, what I want you to be able to practice is slightly unlock knee, high arch, sort of like you're gripping the floor. Try to do your best to keep your trunk upright and your pelvis level. And then you're just gonna stand there and balance and you're gonna start to feel the same burning in your lower leg and maybe some burning in the arch of your foot as yep. these muscles start to fatigue. And Kirk feels it after what, 20 seconds? Oh, it's been like five minutes. <laughs> yeah, we've done like 10 takes, so we're five minutes in now. No, but um, after you feel like you're fatigued, switch legs, do the other leg, give it a break. You can even alternate back and forth till you wear that muscle out. Once you've mastered that, then we're gonna take away your vision and you're gonna be relying on your proprioception and your, or your ability to feel where you are in space using your, your joints and your muscles and your tissues in your lower leg. Because we don't have any visual feedback, suddenly we need to tune in to what's happening at our other body parts to get information. And you're gonna fatigue probably even faster, but it's, an, it's important to know that when you're running, and especially trail running, you're not really looking at what your legs and your feet are doing. You're distracted by vehicles, other people, rocks, wildlife. So you wanna be able to know that your muscles know how to do this job without a lot of visual feedback. And this is the next step to doing that. Cool. So now that we have everything woken up, activated in the hip and really the whole lower leg down to the foot, we're gonna put it all together with two important moves that build off each other. 
They're going to require you to integrate all of this new muscle knowledge into a more functional movement that's going to carry over to your running. Kirk's going to start in the same position he was a few minutes ago where he was balancing on one leg. He's going to make sure that his pelvis stays level, his spine stays vertical, his knee tracks lateral to his foot, almost lateral to his pinky toe side of his foot, and his arch stays high, his muscles stay very activated. He's then going to initiate what I call a quarter squat by sticking his butt back, his shoulders come forward, and he's going to manage all of these pieces. Spine's still straight, pelvis is still level, knees still tracking out, arch is still high, and then you can come on back up. And with every rep, he's going to go for quality. We're not looking for a ton of reps right now. We're looking for quality movement. Use a mirror for feedback. It helps so much when you're trying to learn how to do this. This is much more of a brain exercise than it is a muscle strength exercise. So wake the muscles up, and then we're going to teach them how to do their job. If you do 10 beautiful reps, it's much better than doing 50 where you're, where you're moving in a really unstable, unsteady way. So you can see Kirk's initiating this by sticking his hips back, his shoulders come forward. His knee doesn't really come forward that far. And if I took a picture of Kirk running up a trail, especially up big steps, this is where I'd want to see him freeze in a nice position. Now with runners, because the turnover is really high, you can get away with murder sometimes. You can get away with all these little faults. And when you're running 10, 15 miles a week, that's okay. When your volume starts to increase, that hundreds of thousands of repetitions starts to become a problem. Thanks for checking out this video on plantar fasciitis. Uh, we have a ton of more stuff on our channel for injury prevention and whatnot. So be sure to subscribe to our channel if you want to get access to some more of that cool stuff and updates as they pop out. We're putting out three videos a week. It's crazy. Anyways, if you had any questions or comments for either me or Charlie, be sure to drop a question down in the comments uh, so we can get back to you guys as quickly as you can. And of course, if you like this video, let us know by hitting the like button below. That'll help us get the good word out about plantar fasciitis and fixing it. Thanks again for watching this video, guys. We'll see you in the next one.